Um, so that's... Mm-hmm. Okay, so Got now it. we're on. Good. Yes. So mm-hmm. we've been discussing the uh, um, how the jhanas, mm-hmm. even when someone is well-known and well-skilled in the jhanas, and mm-hmm. then all of the students are wondering, well, if he can do all of these jhanas, why is he still caught in sense perception? Correct. Or sensory uh, uh, wanting and desire. The answer is because it's the first jhana is where we develop the skill of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And if we continue to develop that skill of satisfaction so that you go from one satisfying moment to the next satisfying moment to the next satisfying moment and guard the mind. Mm -hmm. A really, really beautiful example of this, by the way, is that example that I love so much from Achan Chai and Achan Semedo. (laughs) By the way, this is one of Robert's stories. (laughs) <laughs> is that um, they were at a Katin ceremony, which is where the Katin ceremony is after the range retreat is over, after Panza, and this is a time when monks who have not been ordained for very long will take the opportunity to disrobe, because that's the time uh, traditionally when the old robe was worn out. And so he'll wear the rag robes up until the time of the katena, and then he will uh, uh, disrobe. And by the way, the katen um, is a is a word, a noun for the loom itself, where the the uh, robes are stretched in order to do the stitching to take out all of the bad stuff that happened during the rainy time when everything begins to rot. They didn't oh, have gosh. polyester back then. <laughs> So the young, the young, because this is the time for the young men to disrobe. This is when the grandmothers go husband shopping for their granddaughters. Oh my God! All right. Because they know that this is the right place to go to find a husband for her granddaughter. Wow. Because he's just come out of being a monk, he has just learned uh, the skills that he needs that will make him a good husband. One is is that he has been um, fitting in and following the rules and doing the life that is required of a monk. And therefore, he's already in the habit of following orders. And remember that this is a matriarchal society anyway. Right, right, right. All right. And so the women do want the young men coming out of the water where they're well trained to follow orders so that they will continue to follow orders. Uh huh. Oh, wow. And one of the ways that they're going to have that training is to follow the orders is, is that they know fairly well that this young man is not going to be gambling. He's not going to be a drunk. He's not going to be uh, um, out carousing at night. And not only that, but now his new friend base. There's, are the other monks or the other men who now are also going to disrobe and they'll remain friends. He is no longer associating with the riffraff that he might have if he hadn't been a monk. Um, so all of these factors fit together that this is, in fact, the matchmaker's paradise in Thailand. And it happens once a year. And all of these young ladies are all dolled up because, in fact, many of them, the, the grandmothers of, have already met. The moms and, and the grandmothers have already met. They, the one, one has met has a grandson, and the other one has a granddaughter. And these old ladies wind up being the best of friends, and they build their power base like that. That's how the power system is built in Thailand, is by getting the extended family with the right people in it. I see. Wow. Okay. So now you've got the setting, and mm-hmm. the setting is then that Achan Sumedho is sitting there in this ceremony with Achan Chai, and Achan Chai rolls up and he says, hmm, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> now that's exactly the way Achan Cha and Achan Po operate with these <laughs> one-liners. Just come up and ask a question, you know, or just come up and say, hmm, what do you think? <laughs> or ta-ta-ta, or something like that. Well, 
Achan Semedo was Johnny on the spot. He had already been well trained in uh, in Paticha Samupada, and this is what he said. <laughs> I like it, mm -hmm. but I don't want it. Aha. Uh -huh. That's basically the demo right there. <laughs> that that is it. I mean, that's the whole show right there. I like it. But mm -hmm. I'm already satisfied with what I've got now, so therefore I don't want it. Oh, I see. I see. And that was many, many years ago. That was, uh, I think, in the time before he was even an Achan. So, because uh, he was still in training, you could tell because of the question that uh, uh, Achan Cha had asked. Mm -hmm. In later years, Achan Cha would have not asked such a question because he already knew that Sumedo knew the answer. But in those days, that was part of the training. Oh, like just, he just got put on the spot. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, well, they put me on the spot so often. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. Whoa. That's, that's. Oh, wow. I see. So now now we're looking at it in the sense of this is the actual practice. This is Vipassana. This mm. is uh, investigating things to the point that we come up to being able to live in and maintain a state of satisfaction. Mm. So that we're satisfied with the way things are. Right now is okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, wow. and if we can maintain that, then even when the, uh, the, the monk goes into the ceremony where all of these young women are dressed up to the nines, believe me. <laughs> 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 doing everything everything they can uh -huh. to, to work the monks up that yeah i like this and i want it okay so when when a meditator has been spending his time with jhana mm -hmm. then in that ceremony he will be the one who is more likely to actually want it oh really as well as like it why? Because he's already been doing all of this genre work. It's all about uh, sensual pleasures anyway. Oh, because because the, the genres are inherently about mental and bodily pleasure, right? Like the, the exactly the, so. That's why we shut the the mind down and and take the uh, 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 eliminate the thoughts in second genre so that we can experience that full own joy of the of the pity the the uh, the rapture uh that mm. doubles up i mean it's just oh it feels so good all right mm. and so then the young monk is going to uh mistake mm -hmm. the jhana states mm -hmm. from the sexuality and oh, he will stay okay. confused about them but if he's but instead if he maintains that first jhana Mm -hmm. and and develops his satisfaction there mm -hmm. and maintains that satisfaction and works on maintaining that first shot see here's the point it is actually mm -hmm. possible mm -hmm. to be in first jhana and mm -hmm. have a conversation it's not easy to do but it's possible but oh, it wow. is not possible to have a conversation while you're in second jhana because it gets shut down, everything is like the the, well, the, the, the part that, that has a conversation is shut down. Oh, right. So that means the higher jhana, like two, four, two, three, four, and then the I think the the formless. I, I don't really know. I, I haven't really looked into like this whole thing, but I know that there are four material, and then there are four higher ones. Those are completely useless for our purposes here. We should just train in the first. Oh, yes. <laughs> First off, yes. the, what you just said is coming from later versions of Buddhism. Oh. A much better way of looking at it is, is that there are, in fact, four designations mm. of the jhanas, and those designations have actual, real, um, let us say, uh, neurophysiological aspects to them. Okay. So that the first jhana is to wake up the frontal cortex and get it completely involved. Mm -hmm. The second jhana is in with that frontal cortex of, awake and involved in watching. The second uh, jhana is to eliminate the verbal part of the mind or what we would call the mammalian or our language skills. Mm -hmm. So that we can still watch, 
But mm -hmm. now all we have left is the reptilian brain that oh. we're going to get all of this source of great feelings out of. And when we start to shut that down too, then oh. we're down left with uh, the frontal cortex in operation and only the parts of the body that are associated with sensational feelings. Oh, wow. In other words, we haven't cut down the, all of the senses yet, but we have mostly the reptilian brain under control in the third jhana, which means that we're actually capable of managing the feelings in the third jhana that the second jhana were overwhelming. Oh. The fourth jhana then is when we shut down the body completely, especially in the sense of sensation. That's going to continue to breathe, not very much. And oh. the heart's going to continue to, br uh, to beat. But that's about all. The rest of it, all of the effort and energy is put into the frontal cortex, Whoa, which, mean, wow. which means now what can happen is that we can begin to experience these formless states in the fourth jhana. They are not separate jhanas. They are merely formless states. And what do I mean by formless is because we're no longer... Uh, capable of working with the body. In fact, Anapanasati cannot be used in the fourth jhana because the breathing is no longer part of consciousness. Whoa. And the breathing is so slight anyway that it doesn't make any sense to use that as an object that basically now we can think of, well, what's really going on is, is that we are now in the reference of Paticca Samupada. We're down at the level when we can see uh, the boundaries between consciousness and perception. Whoa. And, the, and, that's, and, the, and one of them is, is when they talk about it is in the sense of neither uh, perception nor non-perception. And the example is a, um, um, a clay bowl that has had oil in it so that the oil is still there the side of the bowl will be oily you can feel the oil but you can't take any oil out of it you can't get a drop or a teaspoon of oil out of the bowl but it's still got oil oh, this is what oh. we mean by perception or non-perception which means that the perception is only there so much as to perceive that there, there is consciousness oh like bare minimum but the can't. bare minimum of, of, of perception is that there is consciousness. Well, these states that have been shut down, especially the emotional and the thought, is, uh, is, is where all of our problems are going to be anyway. So in Fort Jhana, the things that are, very, that are actually shut down are now no longer subject to investigation or any value can be drawn from them. Oh, I understand. Got it. Okay, got it. However, if you've been doing the jhanas in a vipassana kind of way, then you know exactly what the mind is doing mm -hmm. because you've already, through the first jhana, gotten all of the, uh, the sensual desires taken care of anyway with your own satisfaction. I see. So now we could say that the, the better way of doing it is rather than jhana, 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 vipassana, the right way to do it is vipassana, 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 satisfaction, <laughs> and now the jhanas. <laughs> All right, fine, fine. You're right. Like the, basically, it's very important to basically uh, work with uh, the lust and the greed and everything, the, the, the like desire in the, in the first jhana to get them completely under control. Uh -huh going ah, i understand now because you're under control and you've got a mind that's fit for work because you're maintaining this state of sukha which is step uh, six of anapanasati so step seven is is to be on guard to watch mm -hmm. for what the mind is doing because it can have those sankaras will either come up in the form of thoughts or in the form of feelings i see and you can work with them when they do. When that feeling comes up, you can throw it out. When it comes up again, you throw it out. When it comes up again, you throw it out. You get in the habit of throwing out unsatisfactory feelings. You get in the habit of throwing out unsatisfactory uh, thoughts. Because for for me, like in the you know in the like when I you know formally practice, right? Of course, like I don't like definitely have I do not you know get enter like you know prolonged states in the first jhana, but there will be bursts here and there where 
I can clearly feel like there is like great joy and then the mind is extremely bright. Um, everything's bright. Um, and the, the, the breath is like, it's like, it's the best way I can describe it is like, it's kind of, you, you feel like you're sunk in a groove or something like that. Um, yeah. and there, I, what I usually see is the mind, the thoughts will say, yes, 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 yes. Like, yeah, that's it. But then, you know, what will happen is be, I see the mind like rushing, like tripping over itself, and then the uh -huh. just the, the jhana will fall apart. That that's usually what I see. Exactly, yeah. that's what to be on guard for. Okay, I see. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what to be on guard for is to not let it run away, <laughs> because that will take you out of the first jhana. In fact, uh, the the really clear example is going into second jhana. As soon as the individual with their frontal cortex recognizes that the thoughts have actually stopped, mm -hmm. his reaction will be, wow! <laughs> but that wow pulls him right out of that second jhana. <laughs> 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 so the skill of second jhana is to be able to go into second jhana without all of the, uh, the giddiness. Well, that's also uh, in the same way, the same as the first shot. It's just a little bit more difficult to describe. But yeah, uh, either having the reaction of wow mm -hmm. uh, or um, that we start thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And because we're thinking about it, we lose that sensation or that feeling of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Oh. So now that you get into that state of satisfaction, you become bound and determined that you're going to keep and maintain that state of satisfaction. I see. Right. So basically, that's my next question is like, so practically, right, we talked about, yes, the whole point of, you know, like, you know, in the first jhana is to learn how to basically maintain the satisfaction. What I've been doing is, you know, when it falls apart, I was like, yeah, sure, that's fine. Like, if it falls apart, it falls apart. And I laugh. <laughs> so I'm not sure if that's like. Do, well, we... that's not such a falling apart. You see, the yeah. real falling apart is when you miss it and long for it. Ah, OK, then I'm fine. OK, then we're good. <laughs> you're, you're OK, because in fact, uh, you're not really losing it anyway. Yeah, and exactly. you can say, never mind. Here it comes back yeah. again. Take another deep breath and we'll be oh. satisfied again. Nice. Okay, so that's basically basically okay. Then we're then we're good. Then we're good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Cool. All right. Mm -hmm. Now that satisfaction mm -hmm. has to be really high quality satisfaction to mm -hmm. actually drive out the sensual desire. Oh. And, okay. the, and the way that we get the satisfaction to be high quality is because we're training in that satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And part of that training of the satisfaction is to come back to that quality of being successful, being oh. a champion, mm -hmm. being a lion, or being an emperor. Ah, okay, got it, got it. Okay, got it. you have to have that quality of, I can do this. I am really, really capable of oh, being yeah. a winner here. I can do this. <laughs> and that that then gives the satisfaction. That success leads to the satisfaction. And yeah, now that you've got the satisfaction, you want to maintain it. And part of the way of maintaining it is by repeatedly going back to, this is really good. I'm a winner here. I can do this. Mm -hmm. Making statements like, no matter how obsessed the mind becomes, I can clean that stuff out. I know I can. Right, right. Got to tell that to those uh, production issues today. <laughs> We've been having like production issues like every like almost like every day. It's it's yeah. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, 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 then 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 this is pretty good. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's basically what we've been doing the entire time. Uh, basically, mm -hmm. what we've been doing the entire time, Jana or not. <laughs> uh huh. Now that that's a really strange thing when people hear about first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana. Just the normal mind, the normal idea is is that oh, first jhana, mm -hmm. that that sounds hard to do, but second jhana sounds better. And well, really? third jhana must be wonderful, and and uh, fourth jhana is just really out of sight. 
Oh, people, people. Oh, really? I see. And so this is the way that the mind works. This is how it was in the time of the Buddha. The Buddha went through the four jhanas and came back and said, but wait a minute, I still haven't attained anything yet. Oh, that's when he realized it was the first jhana. That's when he realized it was the first jhana. Okay, got it, got it. I see. Right, like he emphasized that that was the... the yes, in the, fact, there's a whole long passage about it in Sutta number 36. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Got it. Okay, and that's where the phrase about the rose apple tree. When I was young, under yeah. the, sitting under the rose apple tree, and I entered into the first jhana. Mm-hmm. And now I'm reflecting, why, see, what happened after he was doing the jhanas, then he went to a group that were associated with uh, Nata Nataputa, uh, which is the Jain. And they, what they were doing then is they had the idea that uh, being good in the present moment and abstaining from wrongdoing is not enough. That you, you must, must also... also- Burn off, mm-hmm. old comma. Oh, Aesthetic- so, aestheticism or something? Is that right? So this is the oh. uh, uh, the austerity. Oh, austerity. Yes, yes. Okay. Now, if the austerities are used for training and bringing on skills, mm-hmm. and, uh, some people would consider going barefoot an austerity. Other people would not. The people who do not are the ones who read books. The ones who go barefoot say, yes, this is an austerity. <laughs> <laughs> so it depends upon which book you're reading as to whether it's listed as an austerity or not. But this is actually a very good training tool. Mm. But starving yourself to death or flagellating yourself with ropes and chains and stuff like that or nailing yourself to a cross Oh, Those okay. kind of things, yeah, not 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 so good. <laughs> are are not necessarily training skills to be learned. So, uh, yeah. going on what they call tudanga or uh-huh. tudong in Thai is when the monks go on walkabout, and they take all of their worldly possessions and they sleep out in the open or uh, in places. A lot of them go in uh, in groups, a group of ten, twenty, thirty monks. Wow. And normally you don't see them out on the highway because they don't want to be out on the highway. They want all of the back roads and byways and whatnot. Uh-huh. But from time to time, you'll see them out on. And in fact, it was almost always done that there were uh, all maybe 30 or 40 different groups that would all head for Wat Suan Mok as Tudong in order to stay there for Ponza. So the, the Wat would grow from maybe about 200 year round to maybe four or 500 during this time. Whoa. And they would all just show up. <laughs> they didn't come by taxi. <laughs> they they just walked like, in. Oh my God. Oh and so, my God. And so this is the Tadanga uh-huh. and that the monks do intentionally go barefoot when they go out for Pendabite. Wow. Ah. So this is what we're getting at is what austerities are good and what austerities are, are too much. And the Buddha was doing the things that were too much, ah. giving him the idea that, oh, I should avoid all kinds of sensual desire. But then in this awakening time, after he had almost killed himself through starvation, mm-hmm. is when he was saying, why am I afraid of this pleasure that mm-hmm. comes from first jhana? Oh, okay. And that's when he recognized that pleasure from first jhana, that sukha that we're talking about, which I'm using by, with the word satisfaction. Mm-hmm. When we get into that satisfaction, that state of sukha, and mm-hmm. maintain it, then that is the path to enlightenment. Uh, I mean, this is literally in the suttas. It's uh, right there. Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay. God, God. Oh, okay, got it, got it, got it. Right. So it's basically what we've been saying, like maintain like get us like like feel satisfied and then the job is just to maintain that feeling of satisfaction. Got it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a simple as Now that. Willie, let me ask you this question. Yes. If you're in a state of, of very, very nice satisfaction, 
Mm -hmm. And somebody walks up to you and says, yeah, but that's okay. But why don't you want to be enlightened instead? No, no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> well, the question is, what is enlightenment yeah. that's beyond satisfaction? Yeah, like, no, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what could, what could enlightenment possibly be if I have to, in order to become enlightened, dissatisfied? Yeah, exactly, exactly. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you're getting my point. This is a hard point for a lot of people to understand that, uh, that enlightenment is not somewhere way out there. That enlightenment is something you can have any time that you sit down just to enjoy yourself. Just uh, got Your it. life. Wow, okay. Got it, got it. Yeah, this is, oh, wow, this is, this is good stuff. Wow, this is, this is really good stuff. Wow, okay. <laughs> But it's all old stuff. We've gone over this so many times before. Exactly. <laughs> Some student bright teacher. Yeah, so, you know, what can I say? <laughs> you can say, yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. That's what you can say. Got it. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just, yeah, basically just, just, keep, just keep doing what we've been doing. Got it. Got it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Stay and maintain that state of satisfaction. If you can be in a state of satisfaction, then then why have any impact being in a state of satisfaction is being without goals. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Right, right. And so in this regard, this state of satisfaction is exactly what Zazen is all about, just sitting. I see. With nothing to attain. Well, if you're satisfied that you've attained what there was to be attained and there's nothing to be attained i see gotcha gotcha wow yeah this is this is good stuff yeah um i'll probably have the zen master check in tomorrow or something i think he's showering now but yeah i think he's he's been making um some some good progress too but you know sometimes you know since i don't have him you come and talk sometimes he's beginning to slack off a little bit but i i i try to remind him <laughs> Yes, keep reminding him. It's, and in fact, it's about time to start calling him emperor in front oh. of other people. Whoa, got Whoa. it. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, okay, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. All right. Doable, doable. Gotcha. Yes. He is the patriarch of the family anyway, so he deserves that honor. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. And that gives him also that remembering of, oh, yeah, that's right. I am no reason to be afraid. I'm the emperor. I mean, that just stuck with him so well. That was so <laughs> excellent. Okay. And he got that so easy and so quickly. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I, okay, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, so I'll have him check in in like the next couple of days um, or maybe like tomorrow. Like, or, you know, if, if we don't get another production issue, you know, say like, oh my God. So I'll have him like uh, um, check in as soon as possible. Oh, by the way, this may be the time for Zen and the Art of Donuts again. Oh, is that, oh like donuts for the entire team? <laughs> yeah, because everybody's under pressure from these, um, uh, these deadlines. And if you bring donuts, then that will uh, uh, remind them how you smile at them. <laughs> and that'll help their day. That'd be good. Like right after the release, yeah, I'm going to bring some, some donuts. That, that'd be nice. Munchkins. Yes, yeah. Got it, got it. Oh, well, before this I... Go uh, ahead. One thing. So you you texted me about like uh, posting something um, on on Reddit. So do like let me like let me know like what the thing is. Like you can just probably put it in the chat or something. I did see okay, that. Yeah, we'll we'll do that later. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Got it. Got it. Cool. Yeah, I think it's around high time for me to maybe like you know sleep and then you know start start the next day tomorrow. We we just need to hold out until some of our senior devs come back from vacation. <laughs> Great, great. Well, I'm glad to see you again, Willie. Nice Thanks for too. calling. Got it. Yes, I think you know this is like another another timely demo lesson. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> see yeah. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah.